Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and it's repair time again and this time I've got an HP 344-01A multimeter. Now these multimeters are no strangers to the workshop. I have actually repaired one or two in the past and in fact one of the ones I repaired I do actually have it on the workbench. I kept it and I use it every other day but this is another one that's come in and it has got a fault apparently going by what the previous owner has told me and that is that it displays a couple of errors. Now he didn't have a chance to test it fully although it does appear to be working on the face of it but we'll give it a good test, we'll have a look at those error codes and then we'll try and see if we can affect the repair. So I've got power going at the back so let's switch it on. And well it does power up the display, uh, you can probably see that on camera, it's a little bit dim. It's not too bad, it's just a little bit dim, but uh, uh, but it's good enough, I don't really think I need to do anything about the display. So before I actually go and read out the current error codes, I'm actually going to hook it up to my PDVS2 Mini here, and let's just see if at least the voltage range is working. So I'll just hook that up now. Zoom out a bit so we can see. And I've set a PDVS2 for one volt, and I'm getting bang on one volt. So it appears initially, anyway, that at least the voltage range is working okay. Let's say uh, I put it up to 10 volts. And I've just switched everything on, so it's still in a little bit of the warm-up stage there. But yes, that hopefully that'll just knock itself over onto 10 volts exactly. And uh, one more little test is which I like to do, and that's 1.2, 3, 4, 5, 6 volts. 1.2345, yeah, that's working okay. So the voltage mode is working okay. Right, let's take a look at the error codes. Let's do the self-test and let's read out those errors. Okay, and the way to get it to do its self-test is to hold the shift button in, put power on and wait until the long beep, then release the shift button. So we'll do that now. There we go. And it's going into the testing mode. So we'll let that run through. You can hear the relays clicking inside as it switches between the different modes and yes, it brought up an error indicator there. Yep, it's come up fail and it's back into normal operating mode now and it's displaying that there's an error. So now we need to go in and read back that error. So onto the menu. Find the system menu. There it is and find the error section error 1621 yep and that's the only error so it's error 621 let's find out what that one is okay and straight from the service manual self-test error messages 621 is ac rms full scale failed so looks like I'm going to have to put an AC input on the front there and let's see what sort of voltage readings we're getting on the display uh, which will put it through the RMS converter. Okay and to deliver an AC test voltage I'm going to use my HP 3245A here. So first things first let's set it for AC volts, 10 volts and I'll set the frequency here to 50 hertz. That'll do to kick off. Right, that's all set. Should be getting an output now on the BNC on the 3245A. Let's hook it up directly to the multimeter. Okay, here we go. This is from the 3245A. It's up and running. So let's go to AC volts there. And let's stick this in and see what happens. 
I'm getting absolutely nothing on AC. Nothing at all. Let's verify that this is working. We'll bring in my uh, BM786 here. Got it on AC, so let's plug that in. And we're getting 3.53 volts from the 3245A. Well, the 3245A that I've set to 10 volts, that's peak to peak. So therefore, a little calculation of 1 over 2 root 2, that's 0.353 times 10 volts as set, that's 3.53. So that's what I should be getting on the 34401A. So it looks like, I'm guessing, the RMS converter part of the circuit in the multimeter is faulty. So let's tear it apart. Well, it's extremely clean looking inside. In fact, I would say it was absolutely immaculate inside. And let me just turn it over. And the same on the solder side of the PCB there. It's absolutely clean as a whistle. And there doesn't look to have been any previous repair work done whatsoever. And actually looking at the caps, etc. down here, uh, they are in pretty good condition by the looks of it, completely flat on the top, no signs of any leakage at all. Um, so let me do take out the screw here that holds in this shield and let's have a look at the circuitry underneath. Yep, and looking at the PCB here, it does look to be pretty clean, but I've noticed one issue. Let me zoom in. Well, can you see that? That is one fried tantalum capacitor. And that's absolutely fried. Now, it's a big tantalum capacitor, so I can only presume that's across uh, one of the supply rails. So I think first things first, let's get that off the board. Let's identify the value and let's replace it. And there it is in the component layout. It's 311. And it looks like its sister part is C312. So I'll probably just replace them both. And they're both 22 microfarad, 20 volt tantalum capacitors. So let's get them changed out. And as luck would have it, I do actually have a stock of 22 microfarad, 25 volt tants. They'll do the job nicely. And I'm going to use some hot air to get them off the board. So... Wow, that smell of a burnt tantalum. It's one off. And the other one. And that's the other one off. So I'll clean up the pads now. I'm going to try and clean up that burnt residue uh, underneath that blown tantalum. It does look to have charred the PCB a bit. So I might need to scrape it away a little bit to try and uh, make sure there's no carbon left. Which is obviously a little bit conductive. And uh, hopefully that doesn't cause any problems. Well, there it is. I did actually have to scrape the PCB away and get rid of all that carbon and down into the fibres of the circuit board. Uh, but there was no trace of any inner layers there. So hopefully uh, we haven't uh, destroyed anything between the top and bottom layer. And uh, this pad over to the left here is actually lifting slightly. So I have actually got some glue underneath it. But uh, that comes off of that pad there, way off to a via right next to this uh, AD637. So I will actually run a wire as well once the capacitor's in place, just to make sure we've got a good connection there. So let me go ahead and solder in the new capacitors. Now the way I like to solder in the capacitors is, it's just to tin up one of the pads only, not both of them. 
And the reason for that is when I melt the solder with the solder iron of that right hand pad there, it means the left hand pad, the component will sit completely flush down on that pad. You can only heat up one at a time with the solder iron. So if you've got solder on both the pads, one side of the capacitor is going to be high and the other one low. So I don't really want that. I want to have it as good as possible. So we'll do one side first. There we go, and it means I can solder the other side uh, manually. Let me just move it across to the right hand side slightly. There we go. That's it. That's one in. There we go, on the other side. And that's that broken pad. So I will actually run a wire now from that via down there. I hope you can see that. We'll just tin it up first. There we go. And a little bit of kynar just between the via and that pad. So before I power up, I'd like to actually know where about in the circuit those two capacitors are. So let's pull out the schematic diagrams and take a look. And there they are there, C311 and C312. It's basically just across the plus and minus 15 volt rail by the looks of it, in and around the AC circuit. So let's power it up and let's measure the voltages across those capacitors. Okay, I'm ready for a power up again. Yep, got power. Let's go down onto this one first. Three volts. That's not good. And how about the other one? Fourteen point five. So yep, yeah, one of the fifteen volt rails is definitely not working. Well, that capacitor there, C311, that's across the plus 15 volt rail. This other one's across the minus 15 volt rail, and that one seems okay. So let's trace back where that supply is coming from, and let's take a look at that. So here's C311, which I uh, replaced, and it is across the plus 15 volt rail, as I mentioned earlier. But there's several 15 volt rails, and that one's across 15B. Now, if I look over here, we can see a 3.3 volt Zener diode, which is used as a dropper to bring down the regulated plus 18 volt down to somewhere approaching plus 15 volts, so you've got the 15B there. So that's C306A is what I'm looking for on the layout. And there is CR306 there, right next to that capacitor I just changed out. So uh, let's go and check CR306. Zener diode should be easy to test. Hopefully in circuit it shouldn't be too bad. And actually I can compare it to CR304, which is on the corresponding negative 15 volt rail right next to C312. So let's check them out now. Okay, so I've got my... Uh, BM786 on diode test mode. So let's go across the one on the negative rail and let's see what that looks like. So there are three pin sort of 23 packages. So let's go into there. Getting 1.2 volts in that direction. That's probably just the circuit. And yep, yeah, 0.7 of a volt in the other direction. So that Zener diode's working okay. And let's try the one I suspect has probably got a problem. Let's try it there. 1.4 in that direction. And 1.2, 1.3 in that direction. So I'm getting no forward diode. I'm getting no forward voltage drop around about the 0.7 volt range on that Zener diode. So I suspect it's gone. So let's just go ahead and change it out.
And excellent, I do have some stock and the original diode on the board was 350 milliwatt and that's exactly what I've got in stock here. So let me just go and fit one of these to the board and we'll try it out. Yep, 15.6 volts. Perfect. So the tantalum capacitor had gone and the associated Zener diode with it. Perfect. But has that fixed the error that I'm getting on the front panel? Well, let's uh, give it a test. Okay, well the 3245A is still running, so I should still be getting 10 volts peak to peak AC. So let me plug it in and see what I get now. And yes, 3.53 volts AC RMS. Perfect. So it looks like it's working okay now anyway. So let me go and retest DC just to make sure that's okay as well still. Okay, here's the PDV is too many. Let me just set it to one volt now. There we go. And yes, spot on. And a quick test of 10 volts as well. Yep, spot on. And whilst we're here, quick test in resistance mode. Let's just short out these leads here. Yeah, zero ohms. Perfect. So next thing to do before I button it up is to just quickly clean the circuit board with some IPA. Then I can box it up. Okay, that's it all boxed back up. Let's double check the errors have cleared. Power off, holding the shift button. Wait for the long beep. There we go, and release. Relay is clicking. Yep, and we got a pass now. And one final test. Let's plug in the 3245A again. 10 volts peak to peak. Perfect. Well, that's another tool for the workshop. Might sell this one, not really too sure. I'll clean up the front panel. Let's see what it looks like and we'll take it from there. Thanks for watching.